and welcome back. This is your man, Warrior. This is another patron roster review, and this is Strax Will from Twilight Calling. What's up, you guys from Twilight Calling? How's it going, man? Now, Strax Will was a pretty small dolphin, not huge. Um, everybody's seeing, um, you know, all the Gear 12 characters, and if we go in, um, again, not a ton of spending because it drops off pretty quick, goes to Gear 8 pretty quickly, um, and been playing for two years. So, of course, there's quite a bit of development expected after this, but um, did something. Uh, that a lot of people tried to do, which was go in for Scion, Darth Scion, and kind of lucked out with Darth Scion. Um, got Darth Scion to seven stars with a very, very lucky pull of 230 off a pack. Was trying to go to four stars and ended up tripping a 230 pack and getting him. Of course, you've got offense and potency mods. That looks great. Um, and you've already put on the Zeta on the Lord of Pain. Now, what's really cool is he is an amazing standalone tank. Works very, very well in any team. And I would actually recommend immediately swapping him out for Baze. Yes, that's right, Baze. Now, I know Baze is working really good for you as an auto taunter. He does all that extra damage to Empire um, and in, he's just really durable. And so I, I get why you're using Baze, but I really think that Darth Nihilus can really go into this team. And then what can happen is you can actually throw Darth Nihilus in here and replace R2-D2. Now, you're probably going, that's crazy because uh, Ray and BB-8 um, are a thing, but so is R2-D2. But you could, if you feel like you have to have R2-D2 in there, you could take Thrawn out and put Darth Nihilus in his slot. But I would actually say using your front two slots, Ray and BB-8, with all the foresight, they're going to have a really hard time hitting them. Then have Thrawn, Scion, and Darth Nihilus in the back. You will have cooldown increases, insta-kill, really great taunting from Scion, and fracturing from Nihilus, or from uh, Thrawn. So really, really great combination. And it's a really weird combination that I really don't see anybody running, but you already have Thrawn in there, and I believe Scion with Darth Nihilus would in fact be a better combination than R2-D2 and Baze. Now, Try it out and see what you think, but you can do, there's a lot of options you can do, but Ray, BB-8, um, Thrawn, Scion, and then either Nihilus or R2-D2, whichever you feel like you're getting easier wins with, um, you know, maybe R2-D2 because of the stunning, or maybe Thrawn, um, or maybe Nihilus because of the insta-kill and or the cooldown increases, we'll see. But there's so much foresight on Ray and BB-8, they're going to be able to deal a ton of damage and really not be focused down, and you're going to get that durability from those back characters. So with that said, that that's um, a team that you could really have fun with. You do have one Zeta ready, and if you did decide to go and put... Scion in there, you could all you could always come in and Zeta Lord of Hunger unique, which would really help play into that. Now, I know that um, there are so many Zeta options, and one of the Zeta options, because you're talking about the Sith Raid, is combat analysis. And what's really cool is your R2-D2 now has both Zetas, number crunch, and combat analysis. This combat analysis for everybody, not just you, but for everyone watching, is one of the best light side Zetas you can do for an R2-D2 team in a Sith raid. So there is that. Um, but there's a lot you can do with your teams. You've got a lot available. Um, I know you have Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader, and you do have Emperor Palpatine's lead Zeta. So you could go the route of jumping onto the Emperor Palpatine bandwagon for now and switching from going to Emperor Palpatine, Thrawn, Darth Vader, Darth Nihilus and Scion. That is a really awesome team. It's the team I'm currently using. And you could Zeta Darth Nihilus, and that would help in Darth Nihilus uh, with the additional turn meter under Emperor Palpatine. If you do that, your very, very fastest mods should go over to Vader, and your second fastest mods should go over to Grand Admiral Thrawn. And I know they probably reside on BB-8 or R2-D2 or something like that, but if you're going to run them in arena, this is what you would have to do. So you've got a lot of flexibility with arena, but I know you said you really want to use Scion in arena, and that's the team I would use, Emperor Palpatine, 
Darth Vader, Darth Nihilus, Scion, and of course Thrawn. But if you want to use your Ray and BB-8 and you don't want to take them out, then just leave it the same and replace Baze with Scion. You'd be surprised how amazing Scion is as a standalone character. And you're only one piece away from Scion being gear 12. And of course that can pop because he is seven stars. So very, very cool. As far as ships go, you're doing pretty good, but because you have Chimera, I actually would take the Umbaran, throw him in your first slot of backups, and then I would take out the uh, Rebel ship, okay? And I would have, obviously, the four TIEs, you know, the TIE Reaper, the TIE Advanced, the Imperial TIE Fighter, and the First Order TIE Fighter, and then Bigs. And what's surprising is you're not using your Bigs in your arena fleet. And I think that is kind of your problem because there's only two taunting tanks in the game, and that is Biggs and Sunfac. And Sunfac is sad, very, very sad at three stars gear six. So Biggs is really your only hope, and you definitely have to have Biggs in your starting five lineup if you're going to want to climb higher in ships. You do want to take him to gear 12 eventually uh, as he is one of the most important ships in the entire game to keep your fleet alive long enough for you to impose your will in ships. But I would still run the Chimera, the TIE Reaper, TIE Advanced, uh, the Imperial TIE Fighter and First Order TIE Fighter, but like I said, I would run bigs in that front five lineup. And then in the back, you could probably, because you only can get three in those back slots, is I would do Unbaran, Scimitar, and for now, Slave 1 for you, because you have Slave 1 as a ship option, but what I C is your scimitar needs a ton of work. It's only, you know, you know, Darth Maul's only gear eight at four stars. And then there is another ship that's not even present in here. And if you're looking, everybody who knows what I'm thinking probably already knows the ship that I'm looking for and can't find. And yes, that's right, Poe Dameron's X-Wing, because that is a insta-kill versus another Imperial TIE fighter. It's extremely important that you have that ship at least in your back lineup, so that way you can go to your tool bag, pull him out, and use him when needed to kill an Imperial TIE fighter that's being dodgy. And you don't even have that ship unlocked, so that's... That Poe Dameron's X-Wing would become my number one ship priority if I were you. And so get on that. Also, you know, Chimera, you're going to want to continue to develop Chimera to seven stars. So you're going to have to work, of course, on your Rebel ships. And you've got Cassian's U-Wing, you've got Biggs and Wedge already, and so now you really just need to finish off Phantom and Ghost, who are both almost at 7-star, and then, you know, Biston you can do or not do, but Biston's U-Wing is a phenomenal ship in the game, but be for you know, because you're not really into Scarif Rebel Pathfinder and you haven't got them to seven stars, what I would just focus on right now is just finishing the ships of Phantom 2 and Ghost. So that way, the next time around Chimera comes, you're going to be able to go ahead and get it to seven stars and have that fourth ship in the background back slot. Now, you also asked about Wampa and the uh, Yoda. Which should you go for? You said if you look at my characters, you should be able to tell which character you should go for. And absolutely, after looking at your characters, it became crystal clear that there's a team that can go through phase two, three, and four of the heroic AAT. Just one team, 40 million damage. And that team is Darth Vader, Thrawn, BB-8, CLS, and Wampa. And you have Darth Vader, Thrawn, BB-8 and CLS, all gear 12. You're ready to rock and roll with this team, except for Wampa. So that is the character of the two characters I would highly recommend. You're closest to this overpowered team than the Yoda's overpowered team that goes through hat. So that's the reason why I would lean towards Wampa. And so if you're gonna choose one, choose Wampa and work towards that. That's also just a really, really good character in all facets of the game, from territory wars, territory battles, all the way over to Arena, that's right. There's a few Arena teams that run them that are really, really tough to beat with Rex leads and Han Solos and CLSs. It's just Thrawns. It's just total countering teams that are really, really difficult to beat. Now, the last thing you asked about was the Sith Raid, and you wanted to know about some basic uh, team compositions for the Sith Raid. So let's go ahead and get into those. So for phase one, I would highly recommend a resistance team specific Ray Jedi training BB-8 R2-D2 Ray Scavenger, and I prefer resistance trooper, but you could put in, uh, you know, whoever. 
Uh, Holdo also works great, but obviously your Holdo is only for stars. And so, you know, you're going to have to figure out something else there, but I would probably do resistance trooper and scavenger, but your resistance troopers only five stars. So you're going to have to figure this out. Now, um, you could bring in Finn. Um, he does work in that fifth slot and you could bring in another healer, uh, bringing in a healer works really, really well. And so you could throw Barisafi into this team, but obviously Barisafi is going to require a little more gear. You really don't have a whole lot of healers leveled up very high. Visa Smar is good, but again, she's only at four stars. So probably finishing Barisafi off or maybe just taking in Finn for now. But a Jedi training raid team for phase one is really the uh, best option in my opinion. For phase two, you'd probably want to use Imperial Troopers. You got a great Imperial Troopers team. Run General Veer's lead. Throw Thrawn in here. You got a good Thrawn. You might even want to make Thrawn leader, but I would, I preferably would rather have General Veer's because you don't have the Zeta on the leadership of Thrawn. And then have Snow Trooper, Colonel Stark, and Shore Trooper. You're going to leave Death Trooper for a Chex Mix team in phase three. There's a ton of different Chex Mix teams, but we've got one that you'll be able to build. Um, and so Imperial Troopers for phase three. And then in phase four, you're going to want to do Night Sisters. Now, obviously, your Night Sisters are kind of blah, but you don't need Mother Talzin, Zombie, or Spirit. You can get the ones that are easily farmable, such as Night Sister Initiate, Talia, and Acolyte, plus Old Daka and Asajj Ventress Lead, and you can use them in phase four. The OG Night Sisters do really well. In fact, Sir Gorgeous on YouTube has a video of the original Night Sisters, the original five, all the farmable ones, doing a ton of damage in phase four. So I highly recommend you check out that video on the original Night Sisters, but you do have some work to put in on your Night Sisters. Now, your Night Sisters will help you in territory wars, territory battles. They're going to help you, of course, in what I'm suggesting, which is the phase four uh, of the Sith raid and other areas, including potentially down the road arena um, if you develop them high enough. So definitely want to get Night Sisters going. And for phase three, I would actually recommend a hodgepodge of CLS because he's your second strongest character. And then, of course, Han Solo. He's in there because you've got him super powerful. And then you're going to want to use Death Trooper because the secret is using Death Trooper, uh, Death Marking, Treya, and then having Han Solo stand alone and go crazy doing tons of damage. And then you could bring in Chirrut. You've got Chirrut. So you could bring in Chirrut for the tenacity up, the cleansing, and the heal over times. And then, of course, your uh, fifth person you'd have to pick would probably be someone like Ezra, just because he's higher up there. He's seven star gear. Um, gear 10. And so he's a pretty good option for this phase three checks team, but there's a lot of different variants. You should go on YouTube. I know McMull has a couple of videos and there's some other uh, YouTubers that have videos of what we call checks mix teams and checks mix. That's just affectionately referred to as like a, a bland generalization of just throwing a bunch of hodgepodge things together. And that's kind of what this team is. It's just a bunch of hodgepodge characters thrown together. I even know some people that use pow on this team. I think in fact, uh, McMull's video shows POW um, being utilized, but I would probably use Ezra instead. But you have your Death Trooper at seven stars and gear 10, so you're good to go there. So those are the characters that I would recommend for that. Your next Zeta, um, you've got it going. You've got uh, really great for phase one, two, three, and four of the Sith teams. You already have most of it. You know, phase four Night Sisters is really where you're kind of struggling the most. You got some stuff, some work to do in ships, focusing on some of your crew members and some of the ships. Um, you know, Biggs is really struggling for you. You got to make sure you get that up. Also, Poe, make sure you work on Poe. And then also in this, you could just put Scion in to replace Bays, or you could go all in on an Emperor Palpatine led team. Really, it's all up to you how you want to handle it, but it would be fun to kind of mix and match. I would probably try Darth Nihilus and Darth Scion and replace um, either Thrawn and Bays in the back or replace Bays and R2-D2 for those two guys and see how that works with Rey in the front and those guys in the back. Just curious. Um, but you could also flip over to the Empire. Now, I hope this works well for you. If you have any questions, hit me up, Strax Will. Again, Twilight Calling, thanks for coming by and checking us out. If you have any questions, hit me up and keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.